hi and welcome to Katie Bell Physiotherapy and Wellness. My name is Emily and this is Charlotte and we're happy to welcome you today for our first, well another one in our series for our Ask a Physio. And um, we're really excited to be hosting these live events and we know people often say to us that they're really struggling to get to physiotherapy, that they're busy, um, they can't make appointment times or they just need a quick bit of advice. So we're really happy to give you lots of advice and tips and, and even some exercises for you today. Um, what I would ask you to remember is that all the advice we've given on here is based on the questions you've sent us and not a full assessment. So if at any point we think like if one of the questions you've asked, we think you need some further input or assessment, um, of course we will highlight that. And if there's more questions you want to ask us, we can explore that later with you. So we're going to get started. First of all, I've got a question here that I'm going to read out to you. Um, so this is is from Andy he says I am reasonably new to running and I'm part of a couch to 5k group um, I'm not new to exercise though and I regularly practice yoga I recently noticed that when I flex my left foot so I'm um, lifting those toes up or try and do a downward dog posture I get a searing pain in my ankle and heel um, it has progressively gotten worse but does not hurt when I run I have attempted some I have taken some ibuprofen in an attempt to ease any inflammation however there isn't any visible swelling to my foot or ankle any advice would be much appreciated thanks sure okay so um, thank you for your question and um, by the sounds of it the, obviously the sounds like running is a new exercise for you and but it's really really great that you've picked something like couch to 5k where you're doing a progressive training program and not diving into something too quick which is going to overload those joints and um, my first thought is the fact that you're saying that when you are flexing your foot upwards, I'm assuming you're bringing, mean flex bringing your toes up towards you or in downwards dog, which obviously is gonna put lots and lots of um, stretch and strain through that ankle. <clears throat> so if anybody doesn't know what downward dog is, it's where you put your hands down on the floor and then you make yourself into a triangle shape. So your bottom's up in the air, your hands are down on the floor and your toes are tucked under. So it's a really fantastic whole body stretch and it stretches all of the fascia and connective tissue and through the back line of the body. So it's a great, great move to do. Now, if you have started running, um, we know that running is going to increase the tension and the tone through the back line of the body, particularly into hamstrings and calves. So it may well be, particularly on that left side, that you are just gathering up tension. Now, I'm sure you've probably tried maybe some stretches before you run and after you run. Um, it might be that as you are, are, are running, either just the actual power and exertion because you've gone from yoga which is a non-impact sport into a high impact sport that, that just that tone and that um, kind of action into the back line of the body is actually shortening those muscles so stretch before and after you may need to do some foam rolling and release so some ball rolling underneath your feet um, some massage up the back of that calf to release that tension that you're kind of gathering and, and holding into that my only thing that kind of sticks in the back of my mind that I don't like about it is you're saying that it's a searing pain, that it's quite obviously sounds quite intense, but you're not experiencing it whilst you're running, but you are experiencing it with that stretch, that lengthening out. So, and the fact that it's only happening in one foot as well. So my question would be, um, and that's something I probably would look at if you came in to see me is, what's happening on that left side? So when you are standing and stepping onto that leg when you're running, what I would think would probably is happening is that either you don't have the same strength and stability through that left leg, therefore that left leg is compensating and gripping more in the calf. So imagine a chain of effort and connection through the back line of the body. So from the big toe, up the sole of the foot, up the calf, up the hamstring, into your glutes, then all the way up through your spine and over your head. So the whole entire chain running down all the way the back line of the body. All of those components in that line of the body help you stay upright and propel you forwards. When you're running, if you're getting areas in that back line that are gripping and tight and sore and giving you problems, either that area is restricted or it's compensating. And I dare say, because you're used to being 
nice and supple and doing yoga, you probably have a good range of motion, you just maybe don't have the strength and stability all the way up the back line. But don't make the mistake that the calf might not be the issue when you're running. It could be your glutes, it could be your hamstrings. So it might be that before you go running, um, let's show you some uh, activation exercises. So I would maybe activate my hips. So if my left side was the problem, before I started my run, I would do some little knee ups, nice and tall, feeling like I'm connecting and supporting with my hip muscles, but keeping my knee soft so I'm not flaring the spine. I'd stay through here. I would also then also do some sidewalks. So I'd put a band around my knee, doing sidewalks to the left-hand side, getting that left hip to switch on a little bit more. Um, and then after my runs, I would probably do some massage and some stretches into that calf, but not overly, remembering that it could be all the way through that chain. I hope that helps. Um, so I want you to do some massage and stretch. I want you to do some activation before you run. If that's still not settling down, come in and we'll just check which line, which point in that line is maybe causing you a problem. Now, Charlotte, you've got a question now. Yes, so um, I've got a question from Amy. Amy is asking, so she's saying, I've been playing netball for a new team and I've changed to a defense position, um, normally having been attack. We have some, we've had some touch matches with me marking my opponent a lot to try and block shots. I am finding my right neck and shoulder feels very stiff the next day. What am I doing wrong and how can I stop this from happening? So Amy, first of all, going from attack to defence is completely different roles. Um, as an attacker, you're obviously trying to receive the ball. As a defender, you're trying to block your opponent, getting the ball, defending them, lots of sort of more overhead reaching. Um, and with that, you obviously need to recruit different muscles to what you might need to recruit as an attacker. Um, so with that in mind, obviously you're going to be spending a lot more time with your arms up, defending, so you're going to need a lot more muscle strength, a lot more muscular endurance around those shoulders, maybe to what you'd need as a goal attack. Um, it could be that, for instance, you obviously might be a bit weak in your rotator cuff. Your rotator cuff is a main stabilising muscle in your shoulder, and if you haven't got that strength and that endurance there, you might start to overcompensate using your upper traps, your pecs. So if you're coming up here and you haven't got that stability around there, you just start overusing all the other muscles. Um, that can sometimes then lead to the muscles around your shoulder blade switching off a little bit more, um, and then just lead to some tightness up and around here. If you are getting tightness up and around here and overworking these muscles for things that they might not necessarily be designed to do, you are going to get that aching, that tiredness, that stiffness there, particularly the next day. And just like if you went to the gym and you worked your legs a bit too hard and they ache the next day, it's a similar sort of thing really. Um, other thing to look at as well is what are you doing after your game? Are you cooling down properly? Are you stretching properly? Are you warming up properly before the match as well? Um, and these are sort of things to take into consideration that you are doing because you need to warm up properly before your game, increase that blood circulation, get those muscles nice and warm so that they're going to work nice and effectively throughout the match and um, as well as cooling down properly so you're not just stopping all of a sudden and walking off. Um, so yeah, you need to cool down properly. If it is a case of you're a bit weak in that shoulder and you're not recruiting the right muscles, um, it would be worth doing some strengthening exercises for that shoulder. Um, a good exercise to strengthen up your rotator cuff is having your uh, TheraBand, holding it with one hand, holding it with your right hand, and then just bringing that hand out to the sides, so keeping that elbow tucked in, holding that TheraBand, just rotating out and back in. Oh, perfect, thank you. Yeah, so um, elbow tucked in by your side, and you're just pulling it out and taking it back in. So you wanna do this really until you can feel a little bit of a burn on your shoulder just there. And I'll probably do that once a day, three times until you feel that burn. So it might be three lots of 10. Um, so you know you're really, really working that muscle, thank you. Um, alongside sort of strengthening up that rotator cuff muscle, I'll also be sort of doing some spiky ball work into those upper traps just to try and really loosen them off. So whether it's up against the wall and just popping that spiky ball around that shoulder, having a bit of a roll around, finding those tender spots, sort of pausing on there until they loosen off. Um, and then moving on to another, another tender area, as well as sort of coming into those pecs. Because like I say, if you're spending a lot of time in this position, you could probably become quite tight into there. Um, so yeah, you're probably not necessarily doing anything wrong. You've just sort of gone from one position to another position, which require completely different, um, different muscle strengths and different muscular endurances and things throughout the game. So I would just sort of, like I say, loosen off, strengthen up, um, and sort of go from there, really. 
Brilliant. Okay, I hope that helps. We've got time for one more question, which I'm just going to load up here. Um, okay, so I've got a question from Anna, and this is a, a pregnancy-related question. And she said, um, I was told I had a diastasis in pregnancy. And a diastasis is a separation of the tummy muscles. And you'll often notice in your, your pregnancy that your tummy domes or peaks, and you, you don't get the same um, strength and, and support around your tummy. Um, she says, so Anna says, my baby is now five weeks old. Um, I asked my midwife how to heal it, and she said do pelvic floor exercises. And she said, how does this work, and what else can I do? Um, yeah, I totally understand why you're asking this, Anna, because it can feel very, very strange of why pelvic floor exercises inside your pelvic ring is going to help your tummy muscles get better. Um, so the first thing I want to say is it's fantastic you're thinking about this so early on. Most of us, when we're at five weeks of having our baby, we're still trying to remember our name and catch some sleep. Um, but this is a perfect time for you to get going. Hopefully by now, any sort of um, kind of injuries or um, kind of in, um, issues that you've encountered from your delivery, any tears or cuts will be healing and you will be at that point where you're nearly, nearly at that initial first stage of healing. So you're perfectly safe to be starting some very simple but effective exercises. The other reason why I'm so pleased you're asking this question now is that the first eight weeks after your delivery is the optimum time for natural spontaneous recovery. So we can really hop on board with that and utilize and make the very most out of that recovery. Um, so pelvic floor exercises, how on earth does something down there sort out your tummy? So your pelvic floor and this diastasis, this gap, are actually all part of the same muscle kind of team. And we call that your primary sling or your inner core. That comprises of your diaphragm, your pelvic floor underneath, your deep tummy muscles and your deep spinal muscles. Now that connective tissue of the six pack muscles sits within the abdominals, so it runs through the abdominals. And if we are activating all of those muscles appropriately and together, and we're in a good alignment, i.e. we're in a good posture, so we're, we're not slumping, we're not flaring through the ribs, we're gonna get a better, more automatic connection. Now, a lot of people who come to see me about a diastasis are really concerned about that gap, quite rightly. They'll say, I've got a three finger gap or a five finger gap, whatever it might be. I'm, I'm genuinely um, not too concerned about the gap to a degree. What I'm really interested about is, does that pelvic floor and inner core actually utilize and recruit that connective tissue? And by that, I mean, it's, I'm not concerned if the gap is five centimeters or three centimeters to a degree, because I've seen lots of people who've come in with a five centimeter gap with a really, really good recruitment and good use and support connection around the core and around the trunk. Therefore, I know they're not gonna be at risk of um, higher risk of developing herniation and back pain and stress incontinence. I also know that they are working their core effectively, so if they continue in the right manner, they're going to be able to, excuse me, they're going to be able to get a really, really good outcome. However, I can see people who have a smaller gap but are not recruiting and using that inner core. So we have the inner core and then we have the outer core and the outer strength core. So that's like your six pack muscles and your oblique muscles. If your inner core is not strong enough, you will grip with these outer oblique muscles. And what I chronically see is people coming much later on after their baby has arrived, four, five, six months, and they have developed habits of gripping through their obliques, gripping through their rectus, and they're not recruiting and supporting centrally in that separation. So I'm going to teach you how to make sure that you're connecting well at your tummy. So your pelvic floor exercises are essential to this. So is your breathing. So in a good upright position, whether you decide to sit in a chair, have a back supporting you or in standing, I want you to relax your tummy and relax your pelvic floor. We're gonna do a wink and zip. So we wink from the back passage and then zip that feeling forwards like we're trying to close our back passage to our front passage. You may notice as you do this, a little bit of connection here in your lower tummy. If you can do that, I then want you to see if you can do that with a breath cycle. So we're going to breathe out and squeeze connection, the back passage and the front passage, letting that connection flow up into the front, into the lower tummy, and then hold it there gently as we breathe in and breathe out. It doesn't have to be a strong hold, just a gentle, supportive hold. Okay, now if you're Concern that you're unsure if that's working correctly, um, I'd always advise you to come in and get that checked. But if you can feel that working, feel that supporting, I'd be encouraging you to do slow holds like you've just done, holding on and off of that whole entire breath cycle and then releasing. And then also doing short squeezes. So you go on and off, 
and then relax for a few seconds. Repeat that again, on, off, relax for a few seconds. And the reason I want you to relax for a few seconds is so that you don't just kind of pulse the pelvic floor and pulse the core. I'm training there for you two different types of support. The ability to sustain and support the core as you move and you breathe and you're doing things. So say as you pick your baby up and put them into the buggy. I'm also training you that quick sudden response. So say you sneeze or you know you go to push a heavy door or something is kind of more forceful and more loading than you're expecting. We're training that quick reaction of the muscles to support and kind of connect that core, stopping the gapping there. Now there's lots and lots of treatments out there for diastasis, um, but whether you do stability exercises, whether you have manual therapy to release any restrictions, whether you um, use K-taping to support and actually help that connection, the main thing is if you cannot do a pelvic floor exercise, if you cannot get that connection, if you can't feel that tensioning into your lower tummy and into that connective tissue, then you need to get some help and get some physiotherapy. So I want you, Anna, to lie down, flat on your back, have a feel of that line down from your heart down to your pubic bone and you'll probably find that it feels softer in areas. You may, if you lift your head up, you might feel that gap there. Okay, so leave your head down on the floor, have a go at doing your pelvic floor exercises and then lift your head up with using your pelvic floor exercises and see if that improves the tension of that connective tissue. If it is, we know that your pelvic floor and your inner core are all working as one and supporting, but I know it can be really confusing and there's lots of advice out there. Um, you're not gonna heal this very quickly, just in a six week plan. It's very personalized, it's very individualized. So if you feel unsure, if you're not confident you're getting your pelvic floor exercises or you feel that that gapping and doming is happening when you lift, when you cough, or if you've got any problems with your bladder or your back, then please book in and come and see us. Right, I think we're all out of time now. Thank you very much for your questions. Um, we will be back next week. And so if you have got questions, if you didn't get time to ask, or if you've got something that pops up, check out our Facebook page and look for the events for Ask the Physio. And if you type your questions into that event, we'll be glad to happy, happy to answer your questions. So if you don't, do have any further questions in the meantime, please email us at hello at katiebellphysio.com and one of the team will be happy to help you. Okay, have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.